So what we've got here is a couple of graphs. The one on the left is from the Energy Savings Trust. Uh, and according to them, heating in the UK currently accounts for more than 30% of the total carbon emissions. So that can translate to significant carbon emissions caused by combustion of what we use today, which is the carbon-rich fossil fuels. If we then look at the chart on the right, which shows the net zero target, uh, for the heating sector, that would correspond to a 95% decrease in carbon emissions compared to what we currently have. It's a big, big step. But it is obviously a huge potential area for decarbonisation and that's why it's a significant trigger for the growing popularity surrounding uh, alternative energy sources such as electric systems, heat pumps and hydrogen. It's been proposed that to meet the new standard, new developments would need to produce 75 or 80% less carbon than one built to the 2013 Part L requirements. I think it's, it's been proven heat pumps can play a major role in the government plans. It was indicated by the heat and building strategy which was published last year. Some of them, the, uh, the temperatures may be too low for certain applications. High costs, they are quite expensive. Um, so some of that will mean they're more suitable for certain buildings than others. Uh, and as we said before, heat pumps might not be able to cover areas where you need that large volume of water quite quickly. Uh, direct electric heating it used to have much higher carbon emissions, but like everything, it's progressed over recent years. Um, it has improved considerably and it is now recognised as low carbon technology, which has no emissions at point of use. However, direct electric heating puts a lot of pressure on the grid uh, and it's also very expensive to run. For these reasons, that type of system only plays a minor role in the heating and building strategy. There's been a heavy, heavy investment in hydrogen from some of the heavier industries, if you like. But by default, that's starting to get the questions asked in our industry because if you're producing it at one side, you can use it in other vectors, other sectors rather. Um, and at the moment, with some of the stuff that we've got going on, as you see here, it is looking poised to replace natural gas. Uh, I'll be blended with it initially and then replace it over the next few years as well. So it does have strong potential to become a zero carbon source of energy uh, because it doesn't produce carbon at the point of use. So uh, that's another um, element from the heating sector is one of the biggest causes of death we have is carbon monoxide poisoning. So if you're not producing any carbon monoxide, you can remove that from the equation as well. So it has a, a double benefit from that point of view. I think uh, the holy grail, if you like, with hydrogen is green hydrogen in the way it's produced from renewables, so it'll be zero carbon from, from manufacturer's point of use. It is considered still expensive, um, and it is compared to, to current uh, fuels, but there are current developments looking to decrease the costs, uh, and as always, quantities of scale as well will get the cost down, so as we start using it more and more is being produced, you'll see the cost come down. There was a study by McKinsey and Co who said that by 2030 hydrogen will be on a par with natural gas cross wires, so it will be cheaper than, than electric, the way things are going.